Hello and welcome to Aten Math. In this edition of Aten Math, we're going to solve a couple problems uh, involving some of the properties we've learned about quadrilaterals. All right, first problem we have in our textbook, number 28. I know that uh, trap is an isosceles trapezoid. The measure of one of its angles is 2.43 greater than 5.12 times the measure of another angle. I'm sorry, the measure of another angle. Uh, if the measure of angle T is less than the measure of angle R, then find the measure of angle A to the nearest second. Okay, so now we have to find the angle measure and then convert it from an angle to degrees, minutes, and seconds. So we're going to say angle T is X. We know isosceles trapezoid, lower base angles are congruent, upper base angles uh, are congruent, and my sides are going to be congruent. So I'm going to say that x is going to be equal to 5.12 times greater than the upper base angle. It has to be, if it's going to be greater than that value, we know it has to be the y value here. So I'm going to say that y is going to be 180 minus x because we know that x and y, uh, the upper and lower base angles, are going to be supplementary. So I say x is equal to 5.12 times the supplement of x plus 2.43. So um, again, one of the angles, let's say it's x, is 2.43 greater than 5.12 times the measure of another, which we call its supplement. So now all we have to do is solve for x. I have 5.12 times 180 minus x plus 2.43. And I go through the calculations. 5.12 times 180 minus x plus 2.43. 5.12 times 180 is 921.6, 5.12x plus 2.43. I add 5.12 to both sides. I add 2.43 to 921.6. Now I have 6.12x is equal to 924.03. Then I divide both sides by 6.12. I have x is equal to 150.985 150, degrees. Now I have to figure out what portion of 60 minutes 0.985 uh, degrees is. So 0.985 times 60 minutes or times x over 60 will give me the fraction of 60 minutes. I end up with 59 minutes or 59.12 minutes. Now I have to convert the 0.12 minutes to seconds. So I multiply 0.12 times uh, x over 60 and I get that uh, the value of 0.12 minutes is equal to 7 seconds approximately. So I say 150 degrees, 59 minutes, and 7 seconds, which is my answer. Okay, moving on to the second problem. Uh, given line M is parallel to line N, solve for A in terms of X and Y. And if A is greater than 90, what must be true of Y and X? So this is a crook problem. And so we're going to draw a parallel line. Uh, our line that's parallel to the first uh, line M and the second line L. And when I draw that line, it looks something like this. So I have my black line that's parallel to M and L, or actually M and N, excuse me, this is N here. So I draw N here, these two lines are parallel. So I have my third line, whoops, my third line, which goes through the crook, or that joint, and it's also parallel to M and N. All right, so I know that if uh, this angle here is Y, I know that this angle here is going to be 180 minus Y, because I know that uh, angles on the same side of the transversal, interior to the two parallel lines, are going to be supplementary. So this angle here that I've drawn uh, with the black marker, let's say this is in, I'll make it green. This angle here is equal to 180 minus y degrees. And I know the alternate interior angles are congruent, so this alternate interior angle, which I'll mark in yellow, is going to be equal to x. So these two angles com combined are equal to a, and a is equal to x plus 180 minus y. Okay. Now, so I've solved for A in terms of X and Y. A is equal to X plus 180 uh, minus Y. 
<clears throat> so I can say if a is equal to 90, then 90 is equal to x plus 180 minus y. And let's think about it this way. We have to find out what happens to y minus x as a gets bigger and bigger. Well, I know that as if a is equal to 90, if this value here gets bigger and bigger, then the value of x minus y is going to get bigger and bigger. But that means that the value of y minus x will get smaller and smaller. All right, so in this case, if I have 90 is equal to y minus x, um, in this case, so I've, I've now moved, I've rearranged the equation. I have 90 is equal to x plus 180 minus y. And then I solved uh, for a in terms of x and y. a is equal to x plus 180 minus y. I said that a is equal to 90. And then now I can rewrite the equation. I add y to both sides. I subtract x from both sides. I say that uh, y minus x is equal to 90. But we see that <clears throat> as the value of a gets larger and larger, then the value of y minus x gets smaller. So relative to the value of a, as a gets bigger than 90, y minus x are going to get smaller. So y minus x will be less than 90. All right, uh, last problem for the solid box parallelogram, a, b, c, d. Uh, the solid box is a parallelogram. a, b, c, d is congruent to uh, e, f, g, h. And I'm going to prove that, I'm sorry, parallelogram ABCD is congruent to parallelogram EFGH. I'm going to prove that segment HF is congruent to DB. So here I want to prove that HF, I'll draw this in yellow, is going to be congruent to DB. It's actually a pretty simple problem. We know that uh, because I have two parallelograms that are congruent to each other, they're four-sided figures, I know all the corresponding sides uh, are, and angles are going to be congruent. So I have HG congruent to DC, I have GF congruent to CB, and I have angle GHGF congruent to angle DCB. So by side angle side, you can see that I have two triangles, HGF and DCB, that are congruent. And then by CPCTC, HF will be congruent to DB. So let's go through the proof. Again, for the solid box, parallelogram, and this should be no comma here, parallelogram, ABCD is congruent with parallelogram EFGH. So I shorthand this. Uh, parallelogram ABCD is congruent to EFGH. So segment DC is congruent to HG. DC, and let's make this in red here. DC is congruent to HG. I have GF congruent to BC, or GF congruent to CB. And then I have angle HGF congruent to DCB. So I have two triangles that are congruent, HGF and DCB, by side angle side. So therefore, HF is congruent to DB by CPCTC.